what we do is we help wealthy people to find the right place to live or the right citizenship to obtain. And then we advise them what uh, options they have on the residence or on the citizenship side. Industry, how it looks today, is very uh, fragmentized. We have one global leader, Handley and Partners, and we have a lot of very small companies. It was really a godsend for many countries within the Caribbean that had fiscal challenges, especially after the 2008-2009 economic crisis. Many of the countries would have seen a reduction in growth, and today, uh, practically all the countries that um, have these immigration investment programs, they're doing extremely well, growing very fast. In the case of Antigua and Barbuda, we're growing at a rate of about 5.3% annually, on average. And um, we've been able to expand the economy, put people to work, create a lot of opportunities for people, and in essence, improve the living standards of the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Each time you cross the border, you need to take your passport and show it to a border control official. And this you had to do 100 years ago as well. You also had a passport. And of course, I'm sure many of you ask yourself, is this the, the future? Uh, ultimately, who we are actually doesn't matter. What matters is what kind of package of rights and duties we have received at birth and then carry throughout our life. Blockchain, as I see it, could be used in order to break the main uh, vestige of feudalism, which is now programmed into citizenship. Finally, it's a question of, of trust. And that's where now we're coming with, a, with this innovative, disruptive technology. Now, our plan is all-encompassing. The whole idea is to use the blockchain technology, not only as um, uh, uh, to, to deal with um, cryptocurrencies as a form of um, payment mechanism, but also to use it within the government to digitize a number of services. We've attracted individuals with uh, skills and individuals who have been able to help us to uh, capitalize on other opportunities. And that's where uh, Malta came in. Malta is a member of the European Union and also a member of the Eurozone. We use the Euro currency. And therefore, we have to abide by a lot of, of um, you know, EU directives. But at the same time, we want to be competitive. We don't have natural resources, we don't have oil, and we have to be smart in order to be upfront. And we're managing because we have uh, the highest growth in, in the European Union at the moment. It's a question of understanding the industry and try to adapt the regulatory framework towards this uh, new and disruptive technology. sovereign equity instead of sovereign debt. I think we have worldwide a debt problem in most countries. I think there are four states in the world that don't have sovereign debt. But I think the idea of uh, Chris Scaling, uh, that the CIB or immigration um, investment um, individuals or residents, or citizens of that matter, that their contributions could be seen as equity investment. In fact, prior to probably about 10 years ago, every single country in the Caribbean that um, has a CIB program would have had a very large debt overhang. We are very happy indeed that both through efforts which we are doing on the business side and the success of the program, together the debt, the national debt from 73% is now in the 45% zone. In Kazakhstan, we decided that we have to have uh, some pilot program, uh, resident, investment residency, which would be based on uh, Astana uh, International Financial Center. The citizenship was also a marker for all the states around the world that sends a message who you are and what you are worth. So your citizenship is not only about you in the country, your citizenship is about you in the world. We foresee now that you know, there's more and more countries taking on this concept.